All right, so I want to do a real quick review on proportions. This is based on the guided notes proportions, but what you're looking at right here are two problems from the extra practice worksheet called proportions, how to write them. Let's take a look at number one together. It says Jen spent $240 in 1.5 hours. At this rate, how much time will it take her to spend $640? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a proportion. A proportion is two fractions written in the same way, set equal to each other. And the way that this will simply work is that the very first fraction will come from the first ratio, which just so happens to coincidentally be in the first sentence. $240 in five, or sorry, in 1.5 hours will be $240 written over 1.5 hours. So I would write that down. That is your first fraction. Now, the second fraction will come from the next part of the information which is the next ratio in the problem. And there will be a variable involved because as you see, it says at this rate, how much time, how much time would refer to an unknown amount of hours. So we can call that X hours. And then that's for how much time will it take her to, to spend $640. So that information there is going to become our next fraction. But what, where's the $640 going to go? Where's the X hours going to go? Who should go on top? Who should go on bottom? Here's the key. However you set up your first fraction has to be the way that you set up the second fraction. And if you're like, what does he mean the way that you set it up? I'm referring to the units of measure. If you are putting the dollars spent in the numerator for the first fraction, then you must put the $640 spent as the numerator of the second fraction. Dollars on top, dollars on top. You got to put them at the same place. And notice, in our first fraction's denominator, we put hours. So, therefore, we better put the X hours to represent the phrase how much time. We better put that X hours also in the denominator. This is the key to setting up a proportion correctly. However you write your first fraction better be the same way that you write your second fraction. Now, from here, to solve the proportion, you can use the cross products rule that we talked about yesterday. X times 240 would give you 240X. And then likewise, 1.5 times 640 would give you the 960 that you see here on the right side. It doesn't honestly matter which side you put, which results you put in the left and which results you put in the right, but that is going to come from cross multiplying and using your calculator to assist you. Now, from here, we're almost done. To solve for the X, we have to quickly ask in ourselves, well, what is happening to the X? What well, is being multiplied by 240? What's the inverse? Divide by 240. So that's why we would divide by 240 on both sides. And then in our calculator, we would take 960 divided by 240, and that's going to give you, you can do it real quick in your calculator, it will give you four. For what? Well, the original word problem said how much time. And notice, we even labeled the denominators, the denominator of the second fraction, we labeled it X hours. So there you go. X is going to equal four hours. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. It says Susie was able to get 225 bushels of the fruit from three acres. How many bushels could she obtain from 9.6 acres? As I showed you on problem number one, the first ratio in the problem, which normally comes from the first sentence, that should be where your first fraction comes from. So let's write this down. 225 bushels over three acres. We are going to set that equal to, well, I want you to figure that out on your own. Hit pause on the video. Figure out what the second fraction has to be based on how the second sentence said, how many bushels could she obtain from 9.6 acres. So hit pause in the video, figure out how you're going to write that second fraction, then hit play if you're, when you're ready to see if you got it right. All right, did you figure out the second fraction? I hope you already did. If not, you better hit, better hit pause now. It said how many bushels, so that's X bushels. It said 9.6 acres, so we got to figure out who goes on top, who goes on bottom. 
Well, I hope you put the x bushels on top. Why? Because on your first fraction, you put the bushels on top in the numerator. That's why you better put the bushels on top in the numerator of your second fraction as well. However you write your first fraction is how you should write your second fraction. Likewise, since we put three acres in the denominator of the first fraction, then we must put 9.6 acres in the denominator of the second fraction. Guys, this is the key to setting up proportions correctly. Whatever way you write your first fraction for the units of measure, better be the exact same way that you write your second fraction for the units of measure. All right, I would like for you to hit pause in the video. I would like for you to go ahead and cross multiply and finish solving using your calculator to assist you to solve for the X. Hit pause, do that now, then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. Okay, I hope you've already done this. 9.6 times 225 gives you 2,160. Three times X gives you three X. You will divide by three on both sides. Final answer, 720 bushels equals X. And if you're like, well, how'd you know it was bushels? It's because the problem said how many bushels. Or you could even look at your, your second fraction. You put X bushels in your numerator. So there's further confirmation that bushels is your unit of measure since we have just solved for the X. All right, and that concludes this very short video reviewing how we write proportions. Remember, both fractions have to be set up the way, the same way according to the units of measure, and how we solve proportions, which is where you could use the cross products rule and then later divide by whatever number was multiplied to your x. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.